Welcome back to Golf Training Hacks. You know, it's tough to get that big backswing and crush those drives when you have limited shoulder range of motion. Believe me, I know I have two uh, bad shoulders. But improving your shoulder range of motion does more than just get you uh, a bigger backswing and bigger drives. It's also important to prevent injuries. And here's why. You know, the shoulder joint is a very tight joint. It's very compact. So whenever you raise your arm or move it to the side or, you know, take that backswing, that humeral head is always rubbing against the soft tissue that protects the capsule. So when your shoulder joint is in a bad position, like when it's rolled forward and that humeral head is not exactly where it should be in the joint, when you, if you roll forward and you raise your arm, you're really going to be impinging the soft tissue around that capsule. If you raise your arm, move it to the side, or take your backswing, you're going to be squeezing and rubbing and scraping against that soft tissue in the, in the capsule uh, much more than if your shoulder is in a good position. And that can lead to shoulder injury. But that's not all. Now, at Golf Training Hacks, we talk about a working range of motion and your maximum end range of motion. So your maximum end range of motion is exactly what it sounds like. When you torque yourself all the way back, let's say in your backswing, as far as you can go. Now, we really don't want you hitting that maximum end range of motion every time you're looking for a big drive or a long iron shot. You know, there's enough forces in a golf swing. You don't need to increase the force by always stressing your soft tissue and joints into a maximum end range every time you want to hit a big shot. So there's a working range of motion that we want to develop. Now the working range of motion puts a little bit of a buffer between the end range and what you normally use to hit the golf ball, even on a long shot. To do that, you need everything working well, including your shoulders. So improving shoulder range of motion is really going to help you put a buffer between your maximum end range and your working end range because it's going to allow you to move your, your shoulder back and forth so that when you take your backswing, you have this extra range that would be limited if you're stuck forward. So what happens when you're stuck forward? Well, golf is all about rotation, so you're going to try to get rotation somewhere. So that means you're going to get it in more rotation out of your spine and your hips. Now, getting it out of your hips is great. That's where you should be getting it. And getting it out of your T-spine is great. That's where you should be getting it. But if your shoulders are dumped a little forward, odds are your T-spine is stuck in a little too much flexion and it's hard to rotate that T-spine. And the funny thing is stiff hips and stiff shoulders go together because we sit a lot and we're hunched over desks a lot, we're hunched over computers a lot, we're texting and we're driving in a seated position and unfortunately that creates stiff hips and stiff shoulders. So if that's the case, if your T-spine is stiff, your shoulders are stiff, your hips are stiff, where are you going to get that extra range of motion? Well, you're going to try to force it out of your T-spine. You're going to try to force it out of your lumbar spine. And that's where we increase the risk for back injuries. You know, don't forget, research shows that 80% of us at some point in our life are likely to have some kind of back pain or back injury. And that's without golf. So you really don't need to increase the risk for back injuries by having a limited shoulder range of motion. Your shoulder range of motion is so important, not only for those big drives, but also to help you reduce injury risk. Thanks for watching.